Hi, Eva. How are you? How are you doing? I'm doing great, Yarid. How about you? I'm doing great. Uh, you know, back home. You know, after COP. How how how's Kigali after COP? How's back home? So sunny. I miss the sun. I got time to rest, eat food. Yeah, I'm doing great. How about you, Ethiopia, and everything? Uh, yeah, I'm doing great in Ethiopia. Not this. Uh, you know, I got time also to rest and also you know connect with my friends and families after COP. You know, I was disconnected for. Uh, uh, I think more than a month, so now I'm very happy, <clears throat> you know, back in uh, I'm brought back in the track. How's COP? How was COP 26 for you? How was the experience? I mean, it was great. It was a different COP with the COVID measures and how uh, entering some limitation entering the rooms. But overall, it was a quite experienced. I got time to follow up the climate finance negotiation. I was focusing on the long-term finance and also the new collective quantified goal. But uh, it was hectic, but also get time to learn and get involved. So, I mean, it was kind of slow in the, in the beginning, but quite involved as time goes by and we were, we were able to get some agreement on most important issues, at least to make sure that the conversation will keep going at COP27. How's COP26 for you? I know uh, loss and damage was one of your focus yeah. and it was kind of good to be able to you know, ex exchange ideas. Yeah, How's it for uh, you? Uh, yeah, uh, for me, it was uh, a good uh, COP because uh, you know, I experienced a lot and also have learned a lot, especially this time, you know, uh, Comparing from the previous scope, you know, I was focusing on the negotiation these days on this scope, especially. So I've learned a lot uh, with regards to, you know, uh, learning about the negotiation aspect and also, uh, you know, getting to know more about the issue of loss and damage as I am following loss and damage. But overall, uh, the COP for me uh, is one of the progressive COP. Of course, it's not that good as well as it's not that bad, but it's kind of progressive one. So quite happy with, with regards to the uh, experience. Um, uh, can you tell me more about uh, <clears throat> your experience? Maybe what did you experience? I mean, some ah moments about uh, during COP. I mean, I I'd say for my part, I was following the long term the climate finance discussion, but I was also interested about the loss and damage finance. And I find it uh, easy to go into the we agenda report. So when they actually agreed on the function of the Santiago Network, there's this uh, joy around negotiators. It was very infectious. I love it. So that was my aha moment. The moment I was like, yeah, this is worth it all the nights, the endless negotiations. So what are you going to do on the road to COP27? What's uh, your next step? Well, COP, COP27 is coming to Africa. So, you know, this time in the COP26, you know, Africa didn't get, you know, that's uh, what they expected from my perspective. So, uh, but, you know, the good thing is, you know, COP is coming to Africa. so. Uh, I think we need to do something, you know, uh, as it's coming to our continent. So I'm trying to prepare myself for that. Uh, I already started, you know, uh, working on the issue of loss and damage. Uh, yesterday also there was some discussion on uh, loss and damage and global stock take. I was also following that one. What about you, Eva? I mean, like you said, this couple is like a progressive one, said the stone, the step to do in reaching those concrete outcomes. So I'm hoping to be able to follow all the dialogues, technical dialogues on long-term finance and also the loss and damage facility, but also on the new goals. So yeah, I think the biggest work is done before the COP, ahead of the COP, within those workshop dialogues. So I intend to keep being present also uh, participate as much as I can, provide input so that we get the uh, successful COP27 here in Africa, yeah. Yeah, sure. Uh, I was thinking of, you know, working together with you because, you know, I'm also, you know, focusing on issue of uh, loss and damage finance. So maybe you can just give me some insights or, I mean, insights about the, cl the climate finance discussion and also 
uh, we will see how we can link that the climate finance discussion with the issue of losing damage. Uh, I think we need to work on that one. What do you think? I think that's, enough. that's a great idea. Finance yeah, is yeah. like a lead to all the agenda. So I'll be happy to work with you and yeah, make yeah, sure we have too. like a, a good COP. Yeah. So what was the one thing you learned from like COP26? Um, well, I think one thing I learned in this COP is uh, actually, let me just share with you uh, two things, by the way. But one thing is, it's a, it's a, I, understand, I understand it well that it's a gradual process. And also the second thing I learned that it's going to be difficult, you know, to, uh, to follow more than one thematic topic in the negotiation if you really deeply engage with the negotiation. That's what uh, I learned. What about you, Eva? I say for me, it was like the power of awareness. I think that's when I realized that awareness and what negotiations and then they also uh, help the negotiators to be able to arrive to an outcome. So I think with all the awareness happening before COP26 led to having that outcome that we had, we had in as the Glasgow Climate Pact. So for me, it was the power of awareness. It's like complement each other within the negotiations, yeah. Oh, that's an interesting one. Well, yeah, it was so nice to see you also to talk to you after COP26. I hope to talk to you again in the new in the future. Yeah, thank you, Eva. Uh, also, I'm very happy you know, to talk to you uh, after COP, you know, and also really too good to catch up with you about the COP. So hopefully uh, we will continue our conversation maybe next month. Enjoy you your too. time. Thank you so much. Bye. -bye. For talking to you. Bye.